We're going to look at the balance sheet focus when we're look when we're calculating the percentage of total receivables. This will be different than the percentage of sales. But to review the direct write-off and the allowance method, the direct write-off is technically not GAAP. It is allowed to be used by small companies with the cost-benefit constraint if they rarely deal with bad debt and if the amount is relatively not material. But technically, the allowance method is required by GAAP. There is the income statement approach, which is when you're using the percentage of sales, and then the balance sheet approach when you're using the percentage of receivables or the aging of receivables method. We're going to look at the percentage of total receivables. Now, the preferred GAAP method is the aging method. It's felt to match this expense best, but the percentage of total receivables is, is also allowed to be used. Percentage of receivables, it's total receivables regardless of age. So uh, in that total, you can have things that are 60 days delinquent or you can have accounts that are two years delinquent. Doesn't matter. You're going to take the total and it is an estimate. You're focusing on valuing your assets correctly to reach the correct net realizable value of your accounts receivable. And again, it is an end of the year adjusting journal entry. This is a two-step calculation. The allowance for doubtful accounts is a contra asset, a permanent account. You'll have a beginning balance of a credit. Write-offs will decrease it. When you do record bad debt expense, that increases your allowance account and your ending balance goes to the balance sheet. So two steps. First, you determine the ending balance and then you back into what bad debt expense is. So we're going to use the same example from the video from the percentage of sales and we're going to look how calculating it and the amount will be different. Start with your beginning balances, plug them in your T accounts. Next, credit sales. This will increase accounts receivable. And that cost a good sold number of a million. That's just an example. It was, it was made up for this demonstration. Cash collections will decrease accounts receivable throughout the year. Of course, this is a summary entry. Throughout the year, you would have had many entries when the cash came in. Write-offs, 25. You're not recording bad debt expense at the time of write-off. You debit the allowance account and you credit your accounts receivable if you're using the allowance method. So what is the correct journal entry? The one below is how you would journalize this if you're using the direct write-off method but you're using the allowance method, you want to use the one above. Bad debt expense is an end of the year adjusting journal entry with the allowance method. So you never record bad debt expense for an actual write-off with the allowance method. Make sure you put that in your notes. So what is your ending balance? Well, you want it to be 10% of your receivables. You're not focusing here on your sales. The bad debt expense will be the difference. So again, it is a two-step approach. So what is first you have to determine what the ending balance is, then take 10% of that for your ending balance in your allowance account. That's step one. Then step two, determine what bad debt expense is. What's the difference to get to that ending balance? And of course, your balance sheet presentation is your net realizable value. So the key here is it's a two-step approach. Step one, determine what the ending balance is because with the balance sheet approach, you feel the balance sheet, what is on there, the valuation of your assets is more important and of secondary importance to what shows up on the income statement is bad debt expense.